Hello, I'm Paul. What's, what? <laughs> I'm Adam. What are you doing so, now? I was just seeing how long I could hold He's it He's just doing before. a thing. I had a feeling you were going to fuck around then. Yeah, I just I felt like I've always wanted to do it. To yeah. see how long I can hold it without... Are you proud happening. of yourself or...? Yeah, I'm very proud of myself. Are we opening up the episode this way or are we going again? I don't know, really. Well, uh, let me just say my name's Ben and then that's the intro. We've all had a chance to say it. Oh, I, I, so. I, I think I said my name without you jumping over me. This is Film Busters. I can't get a word in Edra here. What a terrible intro. Yeah. Well, let's jazz it up a bit. Come on. Jazz it up a bit. Jazz, jazz it, it up it a bit. Up. Way. We're doing an episode today on... Called The Mighty my son, Swingers. My son, what have you done? What have you done? This, this is a jazz apple. Have you ever tasted a jazz apple? I've got some jazz apples in the fridge downstairs. You you are a fucking pink lady, man. Don't give me that. I the pink, pink ladies lady, were, weren't an offer. The jazz ones were an offer at half price. I couldn't say no. I would never eat a jazz apple. I know what's inside them. What? Jazz. Plenty jazz. <laughs> you know you know, if you get a, a jazz apple and you put it in a glass of Coke, all like, the worms come out? Yep. Lovely. Have you ever seen that video on YouTube? Go on YouTube it. I, don't, I, wanna eat, I was going to eat one of them after my dinner. Eh? <laughs> if you pour a can of Diet Coke on a pork chop, honestly, all the maggots come out. All the maggots come out, mate. That's why I don't eat pork. Don't eat pork. Not, not even with a fork. fork. Can't, Can't touch, touch this. this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> Simpsons. <laughs> it's the first time me and Ben have actually made a Simpsons like, reference, <laughs> <Yeah>. not Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ready to go straight into the quiz? Because I don't even want I don't want to get you too warmed up. We're going straight into the quiz. Yes. Let's do my it. son, my son, what have you done? What? Again, I have no idea what the questions could be this week. It always says this. Quite. Now listen. Me and Paul are joint top with 15, and Adam's on 12, so whatever Adam does, he can't take the lead. I thought I 13. No, no. You're, you're I thought 12, I was in touching distance. You're doing no. as you guys, poorly you, as you, you have. You guys have been point shaving around here. <laughs> point never. shaving? We never do it. Here come the questions. So uh, apologies to everyone. Me and Adam got the window open today because it's one of them hot days of I've the year. I've actually got mine shut at the moment, but I might open it halfway through. Paul, why do you never have your window open on the hot days? I'm sitting in an, an air-conditioned gallery. I thought you were at home. No, I'm in, a, I'm in a recording a recording space. I'm in a professional environment. You two are sitting by an open window. Yeah, that's right. You are in an air-conditioned uh, place which is recycling all the filthy coronavirus air and you're going to be lambasted with it. Here comes the first qu- of two questions. Are you listening, boys? I'm listening. What food does Brad demand for himself and the hostages? Pizza. Oh, Adam's got so one! For the first yeah. time in ages! <laughs> Fucking the hell. Per, the perp was coming out of my mouth before he shouted. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Look at that. Listening in the room, isn't it? Go on, let's see if Adam can keep the momentum. We're going to go bang into the next one. I don't think Adam's Adam actually got 13. This. He's got 13 now. Mm. I've, got, I've got 13 to lucky. I've got to move on. Here we go. When Brad barges into the hospital, who does he demand to see? Um, oh. 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 Nurse. Uh, nurse something or other. Is that your answer? Nurse something no. or other? It's not an answer, is it? It's not. <gasps> oh, okay, I got it. Go on. The general. The sick in general. The sick in general is yes. right. Yes. I was thinking, what is, the, what is the name? I couldn't think of it. I was thinking, Captain. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favourite moments of the film. Very good. It's a very Kirby enthusiasm way. Look at that. With the Slipped momentum. Away. Momentum was in, on your side, Adam, and you still managed to fuck that up. It was. Well, I didn't know the answer to the question. That doesn't bring momentum. I suppose. So now Paul's leading the fucking pack. I'm leading yeah. the pack, mate. Uh, 16. I thought you were going to ask, what does he call the flamingos? That's, I always have that question in my head all week. Yes. Well, it, this was a hard one to come up with questions for, and I kept thinking, I'm just going to ask him what the names of the flamingos are, but then I thought, that's too obvious, and they'll No, not the names, what he it. calls them, doesn't he? He calls them his eagles and drag. Oh, yeah, oh, very yeah, good. Cool. That, that would have been a clever... That Yeah, maybe I should have asked that. Free do it. I've anyway. also written down the names of the flamingos, just in case. <laughs> what are the names? Did you actually look up the names of the flamingos? McDougal and McNamara. Oh yeah, Mac, yeah, the two Max. Okay. He's out here cheating. He's only he doesn't actually watch. What? Because I did research. He's actually yeah. preparing for. He doesn't watch the films. He, just he does all his quizzes. notes. Listen, if you go into a test, you write up your arm. You know that. You write all the answers. Crib notes, they call it. Mm. When I was in uh, 
I levels when doing? I was 17. Yeah. <laughs> Let the man tell you anecdote. When I was doing my law A levels, well, I wrote the uh, answers to certain things, not answers, but like key um, case names like lock versus whatever on the inside of my razor rubber. So, you know, when you had the old rubbers and they had the cardboard think, around yes, it? Yeah, yeah, yes. In that. Very Pretty clever. Good. <laughs> Did you, you opened it up. Mm. Nam- cheater. What a Nam- cheater. That's how I got Did you use it. Life. <laughs> did I use it? Yeah, of course. Of course, course you did. About the you didn't actually that's why the he's a lawyer now. That's why I'm a lawyer now, and that's why I make all these bucks. I'm just doing this as my side gig. <laughs> You're just a young buck. You know where Jenny is right now? Where is she? Yesterday, when we were coming back, someone had dropped their wallet on the floor, had loads of cards in it, and she took it, and now she's meeting the person to give the wallet back. I hope I hope you uh, you took a note of where he was meeting her. It's a, it's a lady. She might become a lady. Well, might, I hope you hope it's a lady. I've seen the I've seen the driver's license. Oh, you don't know anything. A husband could come pick it up. Like, this could be all big ruse. Uh, well, maybe it would be a very elaborate she, one, wouldn't it? To drop a car in a wallet on the floor. Like, oh yeah, let me meet you at this quiet place. Oh, that'd be our <laughs> sinister way to begin a film. <laughs> anyway, well done, both of you. This is where Ben slips off. Let me just go call Jenny quickly. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be like in smoke. I don't remember that scene in Smoke. The very end when he's talking about the Christmas and he goes up to the old lady to hand back the wallet. Oh, right, yes. Oh, okay, fair enough, yes. That's true. She goes into the blind woman's house. Yep. Still crazy after all these years. Steals a camera. What do you do mm. if Jenny came back with a camera? I'd say we're in the podcast episode. What's going on? We're in the Twilight Zone. Twilight! Listen, I want to get to the main event quickly this, this week because I want to talk about some shit. So yeah, let's, let's get let's to Let's get it. to this main event. Because uh, there's something to say. Okay. Roll the theme tune. The main event. Here is our feature topic. Plus Adam might do a rubbish plot summary. Fucking serious. Right, everyone. Today we're talking about my son. And my son... What have you done? I don't appreciate the way that you keep saying that title like that. Because it's yeah, very disrespectful like to the film. It's very disrespectful <laughs> to this film. <laughs> oh, it's going to be you'll, a bad one, right? find that by him talking like this, it shows that he's not giving the film the, the proper dignity that it deserves. What, because because I can, like, just just be jolly with life and just... Um, There's what nothing are jolly. What are you trying to do? Borat. It's a weird it's Borat, but a Borat nonetheless. Terrible, terrible one. Okay, I'll do, it, I'll do it the right way for you. Today, we are talking about my son... My son, <laughs> what have ye done? I, what you should have done is done it in Werner Herzog's voice. That's what I was listening out for. My son. <laughs> Close. <Yeah. laughs> what have you done? I can't my do son. Werner Herzog's my voice. Son, my son, Werner. I was going back to Borat. Anyway, this is a spoiler episode. We will be spoiling it. We will not be hanging around. We'll go straight into spoilers. But first of all, Adam has to do a really, really good plot summary. Well, I'm just, just going to have to spoil it because you can't really tell the plot of this film without spoiling it. It's one of those films you either know the plot or you just ignore the whole thing. Uh, basically, this guy called Brad, he's played by Michael Shannon, kills his mum. And it's all working out why he did it with, what's his name? It's Willem Dafoe is the Asian and the girl from American Psycho is in it as well. And they're trying to piece together why exactly he did it. Just before we carry on, I really thought you said William Defoe's the Asian. Asian, that's what I thought. <laughs> I thought Asian, that's an Asian. <laughs> that's a totally different film. That can just stay in the podcast, it's fine. Keep it in. Everyone will be like, fuck, he's, he's playing cross race. A cross race performance. And then they go to watch the film and he's not an Asian. He just <laughs> Exactly, they'll be well disappointed. <laughs> well, that was a good description. I, I thought you're right. I thought last week or in last episode that I'd spoiled the plot when I said, "Oh yeah, it's about a guy who kills his mum." But then I, I, cause I couldn't remember. I didn't hear you say that. that. Yeah. It can't just open like that, doesn't it? It can't open like that. It takes about what 15 minutes for you to actually clock that he's killed the mum. But it, it, it's not important. It also just says on the back immediately. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, anyway, I didn't look at that. I put it in. Uh, before we talk about it, I want to get some people's opinions. So, first of all, I want to hear, Adam, what was your opinion of this one? 
Okay, this is a weird film, so I've watched it now probably about a week ago. That's time to About set a week it. ago! A week, week ago. ago! That's an old throwback. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I've had some time to settle on it. Um, my opinion of this film has grown over the week. If you had asked me the other day, on what we, on last like Monday, I'd have given it a seven. But I think since then it's grown to an eight. Uh, because when I first came out the film, I was a little bit annoyed by the whole theatre production in the middle. For me, it kind of slowed the film down. It was getting up to a good pace. It was building a lot, building a lot. And then they added this theatre bit. It didn't really seem to add to the story. It just seemed to distract a bit. And it just kind of... It kind of goes nowhere. It's kind of... It doesn't... It's trying to... I think it's... They thought it's adding more to the story than it actually did. And then it kind of just lost its pace a bit. And then you pick it up again in the end. But since then, I've kind of ignored that part of the film a little bit and kind of appreciated why they did it. And I've remembered the good parts of it. So I'm going to give it an eight. Well, I'll, I'll well, talk about that in a minute. Did, didn't even speak about the good parts of the film. <laughs> well, because you've got the whole podcast for that. By ignoring a whole section of the film, it makes it an eight. <laughs> Come on then, Paul Walnuts. I'm appreciating this. Oh, is it me next? It's you I thought next. you were going to go next. No, no. Okay, I'll go next. Okay. Um, there is some absolute charm in just seeing the master of crazy display his talent. Because I think Michael Shannon plays lunatic so well. I think it's just his thing, like Take Shelter, Bug, Zod in Man of Steel. He was a bit mental in that as well. He, he must be like a lunatic in real life, I'm sure, because he's extremely believable. But, um, and I've got to say, he was just as fascinating in this. He was very fascinating to watch. <laughs> but I don't really think the awkward acting from the rest of the cast or the story was impactful enough or anything near as great as Michael Shannon was. Um, like, William Defoe was great, of course, but like, and Michael Pena, he's like, just Michael Pena, as he always is. Yeah. But, um, Fuck that dude, I can't stand to watch him. I know, it's just the same, isn't it, yeah. and everything. Um, but it just got to the end, and I just felt like a bit empty, and I was a bit like, was that it, kind of thing. And I, f- and I feel like they tried to make a great payoff with the hostages hostages being the flamingos all along. But that, I, it was so obvious as soon as he said he had hostages yeah. in the mouth, and it even showed the flamingos at the beginning. Um, anyway, it's a 6 out of 10 for me. 6? Yeah, it's a 6. Oof. All Oof. right. So I'll tell you this. Go on. Uh, so did, did either of you see what my uh, star rating of this was before I took it no, down no. off Letterbox? No, no. Okay. And Adam, you said you thought I'd give it a nine. I think you said that. Yeah, obviously, if you're going to recommend the film, I thought you'd like it a lot. So it, so it was a nine. So I, I removed that, that rating as quickly as, and I haven't seen this film since 2011. And at the time when I watched this film, I must have watched it, I would say, four or five times in 2011. And the, rem- the reason I remember it being that year specifically is because at that point in my life, I was living with who was at, at that time my best friend, who will remain nameless, who had had a really uh, troubled past. Um, and uh, he was essentially an ex-heroin addict. And he was in the midst of like full-blown psychosis pretty much the entire time that I was living with him and I was kind of caught up in that in 2011 with him and we were doing very creative stuff in the midst of this like darkness that we lived in like there was this big black cloud hovering over our household at all times but from it came like great creative energy and the reason I'm telling all this story is it was during this time that I watched my son, my son, what have you done? And mm-hmm. I could see this friend of mine in the Michael Shannon character. So at the time it was very relatable and, 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 and very, it was almost like it struck deep into my heart, my understanding of this, this person who I was sharing, sharing a life with at that point. Subsequently, we had a huge uh, falling out and we no longer see each other, haven't for for very many years. So this was a really weird film to revisit for me because Mm -hmm. I haven't watched it since being in that state of mind. And watching it this time, after all these years have passed, Michael Shannon does give a great performance as always. Yes, he's wonderful in those sorts of roles. He nails insanity very, very well. However, I was really pissed off with so much of the the fake 
David Lynch potential in there. I, like, I, yes, lots of I scenes agree. that were almost done to like ape Lynch's style, and it was like, well, this doesn't work. Like the midget out in the woods with them looking at the camera, um, just the way certain things were framed, it just didn't work. It was almost cringeworthy, and I think, do you know. At that time in my life, I looked past that and I, I thought there was meaning in pretension. Whereas now I can see that unless it's done well, there isn't. And so, for all of these reasons and more, I downgraded it from a 9 out of 10 to a 7 out of 10. Well, Adam loves this Adam film. Adam loves it the most. <laughs> you, you didn't think that was going to happen. So go on, Adam, tell us why it's such a fucking why good film. Why is it such a good film? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be one of these ones, is it? I just really enjoyed it. I just thought about it a lot since, and I just thought it's just a weird story to get your head around. Like, I just like the whole creativity, like the the whole little universe they kind of set up and his way of thinking. It was just interesting. It might be a film that if we weren't doing a podcast on it, I probably wouldn't think about as much afterwards. Mm. I don't know if it's got that much of a. It doesn't leave you thinking about it all the time. So maybe doing the podcast has actually helped my rating of this film because it makes you think back to it and what you like. I also don't remember The Little Man at all until you said it, and I was like, oh, yeah, shit, that happened. <laughs> the like, Little Man. I think I just brushed yeah. past those parts. But um, I yeah, agree, though. I just... I've not thought about this film since I watched it. No. There's not <clears throat> There's not a lot that stay, stays with you. I think that the biggest issue with it is that Werner Herzog is much better as a documentary maker. And yeah, you could see his... It was almost shot in a documentary way as well. Like, you can see... Yeah. It's almost like it was real life and they weren't acting. They were just kind of playing it out. Because when he gets his documentary people, it's almost like the people in the documentary are acting. I know. A little bit. I mean, it's, it's kind like of what's not... interesting about him. He likes to frame... Yeah. He likes to frame reality. He likes to stage it. He's like, okay, this person died. I want you to tell the camera about the way this person died. But make sure you cry and make sure you, like, make it really heart-wrenching. That's like his yes. style. Yes. He's rather than finding somebody crying a dead person, he'll make them cry like to make yes. the, make sense. But yeah, it, it was also. But this is the first time I've ever watched him do a doc, like a proper film, like not a documentary film. The only other film I've watched of his before I actually watched it about two weeks ago was called um, Salt and Fire, and I turned it off after twenty. I saw minutes that you saw that. That also had Michael Shannon in, right? It also had Michael Shannon in, but the script in it was so terrible that I just couldn't get into it mm. um, it was like a robot had written a script it was almost like they'd written on predictive text and every the phone was predicting what the people were saying that's the only way you could describe it it was so weird and so ridiculous. is it quite new? Mm, no, I, I feel like, like I've mid, heard that mid- title like recently that's weird I agree with you about the um, about like the way he it's almost like they're acting in the film because that um Grizzly Man, I felt exactly the same. Like these people were so over the top. Yeah. Like, do you remember when the, the the lady's crying? Yes. And she, like she's she's overacting the scene. It's like, what are you doing? Just act natural. I, that's that's Herzog, man. Like it, mm. I, it's a strange thing. I think it's because for him, he must say, I like to blur the line between fiction and non-fiction. So mm. even though it's a true story, I like to get a performance out of the real people. But it is jarring. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm saying me about being like a documentary format as well. Cause it's all it's all very much like handheld cameras and mm. following the kind of action, isn't it? And it's like when the when the the porridge is rolling down the driveway, he's literally following. It. You can, it almost yeah. feels like he's running after it. You can feel like the camera like jumping. Yeah, it's yeah, like he's the, running just after in, it. Just like getting inspiration while he's filming. Like those scenes when they were in like South America and like the mariachi band were there. You can tell that that, that just is like a natural scene mm. like mm. when Michael mm. Shannon and Chloe Sevigny are just like talking whispering and laughing it feels like they're just actually having a conversation yeah yeah, yeah. agreed but I think yeah it's very uh, with as you say with the David Lynch stuff it does feel like he's trying to force some some Lynch stuff in there like I, I kind of appreciated the um when he said it felt like the world stopped for a second because I can kind of feel like you're in like the kind of headspace he's in but then it just does weird stuff like they just stare at the camera randomly, or pretend, it's not where they stare at the camera. They're um, where they freeze with the Jello scene. That that scene is, I I really like that scene. See, that one worked for me when they sat there with that jelly and that they are frozen yeah. around the table. That's like he was like, oh, what's happening now? I know. Like, it was that, suddenly interest peaked again. It's kind of like that is like here. Observe this snapshot of this household. Observe what's going on here because this is 
what insanity looks like. This is how banal and 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 uh, un- fantastical it could look, unspectacular. This is a snapshot mm. of insanity here. That's that's interesting because I, I I didn't really th- find any kind of like reason behind that. I could see the reason behind the the whole world slowing down around him kind of thing, mm. but not that. I was a bit like, it's not really frozen. They're just standing still. <laughs> yeah, but I liked that because there was like that wobble. If it had been a fr- if it had been uh, a still, it would not have been. It's impactful. true. You wouldn't have. You would have even like thought about it. It would have just been. A and like, if it had been more like, like oh, that, that would have been good. But that little, uh, like the the dwarf and them talking about this advert and then staring at the camera is like, okay, it's kind of a nice shot. It looks quite beautiful, but it it's imitation pretension. There's nothing mm. here. Like David Lynch would never just do that. Everything has to have some kind of meaning behind it. It felt a bit like this is just doing it for the sake of it just to make it look a bit weird yes and I, I really thought everyone was over ever, overacting apart from William Dafoe and Michael Shannon more more of the people surrounding Michael Shannon in his life for the backstories like I thought his mum even though she, even though I like her sometimes sometimes I don't really like her actually in stuff she's she, I don't think she's a very good actress oh she is no but like in she stuff she's is. I don't think she is in, in some stuff she wasn't in this no I thought she was good in this I don't really like her in this. She played that role very well. Yeah. It was a very believable relationship, though. Going into it, if you're thinking that she's got some mental problems as well, maybe she's doing a good job. Well, why did, what didn't you like about her performance? This was Grace of Whiskey we're talking about. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't really like her. I didn't like it. She, she was just annoying me. I but I feel like everyone was overacting in the scene as well. And also, I did notice as well that... Uh, he he liked to force his coffee into the film as well. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get Lynch's coffee in there. Yeah. <laughs> but he was he was like he was obviously buddy buddy with Lynch is like let me do a few nudges. He's already said like the reason that he cast Grace Sabrisky in a role was because of David Lynch. It was like uh, th- this is in honor of you. I'm going to mm. put her in the film in one of her. How much? How Lynch much films. did Lynch have involvement in this film? My understanding is not much apart from the money man. Like maybe he may have had some conversations with Herzog. But his like, name is in big letters across the title of the DVD. Mm, yeah. yeah, David Lynch. It's bigger than Werner's Herzog's. I don't think I would have really seen this film had uh, Lynch's name not been on it uh, at the time. So I think it just helps push and, and it would have got yeah. it in front of a market that would otherwise not have seen it. Because Herzog isn't really very well known for his his fiction films I mean Fitzcarraldo though is like spectacular because of what happens with it you've seen that right no I've only seen the documentary about how it was shot you've seen the documentary and you haven't seen Fitzcarraldo though itself no because it's not it's not on any of them I need to find it I don't even know what that is Fitzcarraldo though is the Werner Herzog film that he did with Klaus Kinski where they literally went into the jungle and fucking carried a ship over a mountain it's stunning they actually did it's it. basically like apocalypse now kind of like it, it took is. them so long to do it it all went wrong actors kept leaving and, and Kinski oh, I think I've heard of this a while ago yeah I just didn't know the title of it Kinski and Herzog just like Herzog's a, a, a cool guy but Kinski was a fucking lunatic and you can see videos of their arguments on that set if you go on YouTube mm. Kinski's a psycho and funnily enough the relationship between Herzog and Kinski on the making of that film was very similar to how my relationship was with this friend that I'm speaking about as well. Right, right. Who are you? But I thought what was interesting... I'm Herzog. I'm the, the level-headed one. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm the genius. Was, this is the first time I would say that I have what, re-watched a film that I thought I really liked mm. and have dropped it not by one but by, by two because I think that's quite significant because most of the films that I look back on and go, yeah. they're the nines and the tens, I think, well, they're never going to change. But it all depends on where you are at that time in yeah. life. I rewatched Kangaroo Jack the other day and I realised how terrible it was. You knew it was terrible all along, mate. Yeah, but you kind of knew it. I thought it would be a bit of fun at least. It was just <laughs> goddamn awful. <laughs> I What I felt about everyone else in this film, because Michael Shannon was so good and he was so over the top with his wackiness as he is, I feel like everyone was trying to match him with their acting style. Like they needed to be like, a notch above what they normally do, and a bit, a little bit more over the top. Who did you think was over the top out of interest? Like, I feel like Chloe Savini was. I feel like um, the mum was. What's her name? Yeah, but Grace Sabrisky is, is cast to do that. She's like play your Lynch, play your I know, Lynch character. I know, I know, I know, perfectly. and she, but she's good in Twin Peaks, right? But I've seen her in a, in a show. I can't remember what show it was in, 
but, I re- but she really annoyed me in that show, and I feel like I've taken it from that. Nah. Chloe Savini, what well, I didn't think was overacting it. Even Udo Kerr, I didn't think was overacting it. Udo Kerr was all right. Do you know we've seen I think four Udo Kerr films this year? I know. Did this? Up. Isn't did it you, mental? Did you think of this film because of Udo no, Kerr? I, I just it didn't even really occur to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Brad Dourif. How many Brad Dourifs? <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> How many Brad Dourifs have we had? It must have only been two. This must be the second one. Exorcist. This. I thought there was another. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't my intention. How many Willem mm-hmm. Dafoe's we had? Only one. Yes, I don't think we've had Willem before. But I feel I kind of felt bad, right? After I rewatched this film, I felt bad for you guys because I watched this film like the day after we said we were going to watch it. Uh, mm-hmm. And I watched it and I was like, shit, if I had watched this before suggesting it for the podcast, I would not have suggested it because in my mind... It, there was a lot more to, to talk about and, and, and there was a lot more to analyse. But actually, it's, it's kind of... It's a little superficial in terms of what you could really draw out of it. It just is what it is on the I surface. I just enjoyed it. I can't explain to you why I exactly enjoyed it, but I did enjoy it. It was quite interesting. I you did, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed... I'll tell you what I did enjoy. I enjoyed the moment when he's going up the escalator. I thought that was quite a nice moment. Mm-hmm. Or when he's running and he runs her back up it again. Yeah. Goes down it and then run back up. It was quite a it was quite a surreal but like kind of nice little moment. Um what else did I like in this film? Probably just his performance. I can't think of another moment I actually really liked. It was scenes it was scenes that worked. I agree with you, Adam, that everything to do with the theatre was horribly annoying. And very dull. It just it just it just stopped the pace of the film. Yes. It just slowed the film right down. But that's the whole that's the whole thing. It's all that is the why at the end of the day. I don't think I don't think the say making the subtitle it's not about who, it's about why is really a good subtitle because it's like it really doesn't matter why in mm. the end. But because it's a theatre production, that's why I did it. That's not a good enough reason. But you know this is based on a true story. Yeah, partly. of course. Of course. But I don't feel like there's no kind of revelation where you're like, oh my god, he did it for this reason because of this sh- this theatre production. Yeah, but you I was never expecting that either. Yeah, but it's it's not a really good reason, is it? I mean, Being, I, what, because he killed the mum because because he kills the mum in the play. Yes, I think it was. It, he was obviously imbalanced beforehand. He had issues with his mum anyway, and the play just brought it to fruition. But it was it was jammed in in a very odd way. It wasn't it wasn't done very nicely. It was it, it, it. It's not very defensible. This this film. It mm. is just a film that intends to be really profound, and it's not. But it is a very, very, very good study of insanity. I think because by Michael Shannon just channeling that inner performance, I think that's what insanity and mental illness is like. He knows. Mm. He know. Like you say, he must be going through some of it himself because the way he chooses his roles all. Yeah, all comes definitely. back to that. That role in Revolutionary Road as well, if you boys have seen that, him in that is fucking I heard wonderful. that as well, yeah, that, inver- mm-hmm. that he plays... He is fantastic like in Revolutionary that. Road. He's only got two scenes in it. He plays the neighbour's son, doesn't he? Or something? Yeah, Kathy Bates' son. What do you rate that film? I, th- I think I think it's a 10 or a 9. I think it's a 9. Mm-hmm. I think it's a 9. Okay. It's very good. Very Who directed good. it? Uh, Sam uh, isn't it Mendes. Sam Mendes? Yeah. Sam Mendes, yeah. Sam Mendes, yeah. Sam Mendes if we would. It is, a, it is one of the best, like, Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet in that, when they argue, you've seen it, Adam. Yeah, I watched it quite recently. When they argue, it is so believable. It doesn't feel like a movie it's argument. It's almost gut-riching. Yeah, everyone like, had banged you're... on about marriage stories, saying, oh, this is so real, this is what a relationship is like. No, 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 no. These are people who've never been in a relationship who think that's what a relationship's like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we're getting off topic, but it's just another good Shannon one. Yeah, so it's going to be on the list now. I'm going to definitely watch that soon. But I, it's on Netflix, I think. Yeah, I think it is on Netflix. Yeah. Let's let's talk about um, the worst security guard ever. <laughs> the guy who just who's on an army site, and some crazy person comes up to the barrier, and says, "I need to see the sick in general. I need <laughs> to see the sick in general." And he goes, "Oh, the general. Yeah, just go in. I, I know. haven't got an appointment." That was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that was funny. The, the, the sick in general bit is the funniest bit of the film. 
What kind, what kind of place is it? I thought it's like a military base. I feel like it is. I feel like it was meant to be. But then be. why was there a gift shop? Oh, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you. And why would the gift shop sell pillows? <laughs> I know. He immediately said, I want to get them a pillow before he even went into the shop. And then when he walks in, they're right there. <laughs> See, that's, that's bad like, writing. That is so that's rare what that is, is bad to writing. find a pillow. I know. Yeah. <laughs> what did you... I would reckon he walked into the shop and went, what could I get him? Oh, shit, there's pillows there. Let's just write pillows into the script. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. They probably were. Just on set. What do, what do you have in the gift shop? <laughs> Got pillows and frames. Yeah. Pillows and frames. Where's the Arnie? <laughs> I don't know. They're from Austria. <laughs> Pillows and frames. <laughs> what did you make of the? Uh, what What do you think the symbolism is meant to be of the basketball in the tree? Um, uh, I just thought it was like giving him giving up on his dreams. I just I just kind of thought it was what he said it was. He's just leaving it there to, to inspire somebody else to pick up a ball and start playing. Yeah, almost like this is this is what his he believed his vocation was going to be from when he was a young boy, but. He just never made it that far, so it's like it's up to someone else to carry on his kind of dream. Oh, interesting. I didn't think that. I thought it was him, like showing that insanity can affect all different people, and that boy at the end, like the ball is symbolic rather than it being his dream is his insanity. And okay. that he's boy passing on his insanity end. rather than a basketball. Yeah, well, not so much passing on, but like that boy at the end, he also will suffer from terrible mental health. And, he, and did you see the cutscene at the end? That little boy went and killed someone. Yeah, I saw that. With the same sword as well. Yeah, same sword. Did you see that, Adam? No. <laughs> I liked Adam's, when they... th- Adam's thinking, did that happen? <laughs> Don't you think Brad the Riff's bit was good, though, when he, was, when he got all uh, upset that he was going to be using the sword in a play and he's turned into a real yeah. homophobic prick? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. He was really homophobic. <laughs> he was. He started slagged off the French as well, didn't he? Or everyone, you know what kind of man that is. Do you think like people who are in movies, they know that just like average members of the public like us make podcasts, so they must sometimes go. Let me just see what they thought of this film. Let me go and try this podcast and just listen to see what people say about. Would it. you though? I, I say that. I say so. Opinions. People love podcasts nowadays. They must. They. I wouldn't say they're going to specifically come and listen to our podcast, but definitely the big ones. They'd be interested. I think if I would, if I made the big time, I would come and listen to the really small ones like this out of interest, just to see what people who are untouched. Well, no, we're not really small, Ben. We're, we're average. Yes, average. Yes. And put ourselves down. Yeah, because you kind of when you're when you're big, you kind of need to push like a certain agenda, don't you? You don't want to mm. be too mm. rude or so you want to hear the the gritty truth. We like to swear here. Fuck yes. yes. <laughs> you Toy Story a cunt, didn't you? Fuck yeah, yes. Definitely. He called the doll a cunt, not Toy Story. Oh, yeah. He actually made Paul it the said the other day that he only reserves the nines and tens for things that are truly unique, things that he's never seen before, and then he goes and gives Toy Story 4 a 10. I know, that's not, that's not why. <laughs> that's not why I said That is what I said. You, <laughs> you said, it needs to be something different. I feel like I've seen it before. It's like Toy Story 4, you've seen that shit before thrice. You're like, you're watching it and you're like, Woody, that's a great name. Why did I, why, this one must have got my name, like subconsciously got my name for my son from. My son. We're not talking about Toy Story 4. Listen, this is how, how, not how bad this film is, but this is how uninteresting this film is to actually talk about. The most interesting thing for me is something that's not even worth talking about for listeners because no one has any frame of reference. But for me, it's a very interesting thing for me to analyse and pick over because it makes me think about a time in my life which was very, very mm. different and how I, uh, how, how I processed the information based on the situation I was in. I think that is probably true for a lot of films. And this is not old enough to have nostalgia attached to it so I can be more brutal in chopping it down. So like if I if this was a kind of film I'd seen thirty years ago and for thirty years I've been thinking I loved it and then saw it maybe not but because it's more recent history it's a bit easier. I think it is it is class as nostalgia though. It's nostalgia of a time in your life. you rewatch it now, mm. fresh Ben? What would you give it? I have I did rewatch it fresh. Yeah, but you obviously had like some fond memories of it. you going in with fond memories of it. Like us two, we didn't know anything about it. We didn't know if it was good or bad, what it was really about. I think I would no, I would give it this 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 rating that I'm giving it now because like Okay. I'm not voting it down because of what I went through. I'm voting it down because I just don't think it's as good as I built it up to be back then. 
mm. back then I was in a I was in a a creative partnership where literally we were trying to do things that were odd and weird just for the sake of that and we said oh it must be good because it's odd and weird and dark and that's kind of why I, I think we rated this film so highly and just because something is odd and weird and dark doesn't mean it's good it has to have more going for it and this didn't and I think the direction the writing the performances and the story are all failing but Shannon's central performance and yeah. a bit of the oddness holds it together for me it was interesting enough it held my interest throughout the whole film and I didn't I've, and because it. it's yeah. 90 minutes right like if this had been two hours oh no low low oh low. yeah yeah but 90 minutes is the right quantity of time for let's, it let's just let's just put this into perspective okay Adam just said it was interesting enough mm. and what score did you give Adam an 8 <laughs> come, on inter- come on now come on now I never lost interest in the film as well that's like a Apart from maybe the fear to be, it kind of. Like, I cannot lose, lose interest in a seven out of ten, and a six out of ten. Mm. <laughs> oh, definitely in the six. <laughs> I've hit enough. I've hit enough. No. I made things really awkward. <laughs> Go home. <laughs> what I didn't like was Willem Dafoe's little anecdote behind the wheel at the beginning of the story because it's annoying. Oh yeah, what was, was it, it about again? So he. Oh yeah, the, he was chasing another policeman in a car or yeah. something or other, wasn't he? But he's a he's a homicide detective, so he pulls rank over him or something. Yes. Something yeah, I was just, like yeah. Madam, I mean the sick in general. <laughs> that is the funniest bit in the whole thing. The general, the general. I don't, I don't think the general's. Oh man. Available. You know what was also kind of jarring this time round is I remember him saying the thing before about wanting to call himself Farouk, but when he's, yeah. he goes off on a monologue and he just suddenly goes, and I think I shall become a Muslim. It's like, what's that got to do with anything that you've just been talking about? Mm. I think half the stuff in this film just ran him just for the sake of being random because he's supposed to be like, mentally unhinged that he's just saying anything and everything. Yes, because he says that and then he sees God in the face of the porridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the porridge man. What's that? What's those porridge jokes called? And the man with the white flow in here? Oh. Something... It's not, not our ones. It's probably an American It's brand. an American one, yeah, because it's got it something to like do that. with... What, they, so they, all the porridge guys look the same, do they? They pretty much do, don't it they? It was Quaker Oats. It was, it was, it was it Quaker Oats, that's it. <laughs> Quaker. It's Quaker Oats. It was go. Quaker Oats. And that's what he had, yeah? Quaker Oats? Yes. I told you. All these... You can't, make, you can't make broad assumptions that all porridge men look the same. Oh, well, I know. All the porridge men look the same. <laughs> the Scottish porridge man doesn't look anything. That Scottish porridge man got ginger hair because he's, he's a stereotype. Terrible. Oh, yeah, he's got the kilt on. and He's throwing the, he's throwing the ball. Wait till that he gets man. a bit older and he'll all be white-haired. <laughs> Flowing. <laughs> With that that man's been around hand. for years. He hasn't aged today. No. And he's still holding a shot put in the same direction. He was Uncle Ben. He's fake, though, isn't he? He's not real. Uncle Ben's fake, that's right. Yeah. So is Aunt Jemima, all yeah. fake. Aunt Bessie's probably fake. Aunt Bessie. She don't really make, she don't really make those Yorkshire puddings. What about Mr. Kipling? He's real. Kipling's He's real. real, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say that with such <laughs> conviction. <laughs> anyway, I don't think there's too much more to say about this film, and I'm sorry for that. I feel bad. Listen, I think okay. this is an interesting episode just for a study of... How nostalgia can sometimes not be good for a film. Yeah. And it goes to show you need to revisit the old ones sometimes and, and make sure that you actually do think that way. It shows growth of mind, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See? Can it, do you remember when you said, I don't know why you re- revisit films so much? No, 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 stand no, up. no, 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 me and Adam are taking him to fucking task on this thing, and he don't and now like he'll, it. He'll edit it out now. So he will, will look yeah. correct. I'll just put my my single voice in, just yeah. saying that Ben always makes these statements, and then he he immediately does a U-turn on them. I'm cross about that. <laughs> 
my my I would always revisit the 1910s. Of course, <laughs> I love to watch the 1910s over and over you again. You could just leave it there, could you? No, no, I won't. I mustn't because you you misunderstand me, my boy. Of course, <laughs> I'm going to rewatch you. the nines and tens. They're the, the, How about the eights? best. How about the eights? Yeah, the eights can be revisited. It's Sometimes the sixes the sevens. and sevens, and you but you rewatch the sixes and sevens when you only re, when you only watch the sixes oh, and sevens a year. All the air's so coming out your lungs. I'm, mate. I'm burping up here. <laughs> only uh, no, no, I rewatch a seven. Yeah, it's no point. Although I did do that the other day with Drag to Cross Concrete, but that's because it was like tickling me. That's <laughs> right. You did it the other day. <laughs> I'm not I saying never do it. I could take, I could snip, I could snip a little uh, section from the last podcast where you said I'd rewatch a seven. <laughs> but I wouldn't. I never said that. I would this rewatch a, a seven. This has turned into a podcast about arguing with each you, other. I know you like to <laughs> to rewatch the sevens as much as possible, and I say no need for that. Watch a newbie. Oh, I do as well. I only revisited Dragged Across Concrete because I was in the middle of that Zala sandwich. You needed, you needed the trilogy. That's right. And I appreciate that. And what I do you think you of Pro- Problem Sale at 99? Me? No. I didn't care for it. You gave it a seven? Yeah, I know, but seven... I did. It's, it's my least, least favourite. If we did a whole podcast on that, I would take it to task a lot more than I took Dragged Across Concrete to task. Yeah. They're just too long, and that that um, cell block nine 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 is just there's not nothing really going going for it outside of what it what it is. Whereas the other two felt like they had something interesting. And you just don't like Vince Vaughn. And that may be may well be. Well, no, do you know what it was? In Drag to Cross Concrete and in Bone Tomahawk, there's multiple characters for you to to follow along the way. There's a, a few, for, yeah. Whereas this is with Vince Vaughn all the way, and you either like him and you can go with it, or you don't. And I do not like him. And I just thought it was stupid that he was like Terminator. Like n- everything he touched was fine. I was just like, no, 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 no. Anyway, this isn't the Cell Block ninety nine podcast, no. is it? It's it's the avoid talking about the film that we all came to talk about <laughs> episodes because there's really nothing to talk about. I have to be more oh. savvy next time. I can't wait for my next pick. You boys, oh, you don't know what you got coming to you. I'm so. My next pick is so unlike anything we have ever covered on here, and I can't wait to hear what you got to say because you will have views. It? I can't tell you. You're going to have views. Give us a clue. Like, oh, no. Because it's it, Barbie the movie. No, no. All I'll say is it's, it's like absolutely nothing that you have ever seen before. That's nice. I'm excited for that. Anyway, can I just take a moment, though, in all of this to say, despite me dropping my score down, I will take Paul to task a little bit because six is not... I do not find that an appropriate score for this because six, to me, it's very appropriate. it was very, very passable. You, I, I don't know about that. So that's, it that's, had better moments than to be a six. Yes. No, it didn't. Six is very damning, and I don't feel like you damned it enough to warrant that six in this episode. What the fact that I said that none of the none of the actors were acting very well in it, and the only person that was good in it was Michael Shannon, and the the fact that the subtitle was called like uh, "Why did he do it?" and the reason he didn't do it wasn't actually very good, so none of that was worth it. No, well, a reason for a six. No, I, why are you obsessed with a subtitle? I can't remember no fucking subtitle. You mentioned a subtitle twice now. You said that because <laughs> on the front of the cover it says. Oh, forget the it's cover. It's not man. why he does what? it. What you, it's why not you who, hung who up on it the cover is. For? It's why he does it, mate. You're living in the past. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> it's a five now. I've dropped it down. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck that jolly. And the other thing I will say is, everyone on Twitter is a bunch of assholes. Because know, all they know cares. to comment on, and I'm talking to all of you that are listening, all you know to comment on is what you're told to watch. If any of you showed up a little in your own lives and actually watched the <laughs> film that you wanted to watch just because you want to watch it rather than everyone else says you should watch it, you might have something to say about the, the more offbeat, obscure films. Every film that I suggest for this fucking podcast barely gets any comments, where the other boys get all the comments. So use your nude away. Try and live a little. Fucking <laughs> Gallagher up in it. It's all right, because no one's going to no listen to this episode anyway. Oh, no, no exactly. <laughs> they would have quit a long time ago with our ramblings. When they got to the porridge men, they're like, no, nah, let's get out of this now. <laughs> porridge men. <laughs> all anyway, the porridge men look alike. Before anyone business. says anything, I am going to be the porridge man of this film. You're going to be the god. Stat. You want to be god, yeah. I'm going to be porridge, yes. Well, I'm going to you be Michael be Shannon then because I don't know which which what what to think. If you couldn't anymore. be Michael Shannon, who would you be? I bet you'd say Michael Pena. I'd be Brad Dourif. <laughs> yeah, that's more like you. Yeah. 
Adam will be Chloe Savigny. We all agree on that. <laughs> Adam, you'd be Michael Pena, actually. That's a good one. That is a very accurate representation of you. Well, I just bring you water in the middle of your shift. Pointing guns yes. at the water. I love how I love how he's he Ben's very like convinced that he's Michael Pena, but just at the beginning where we start talking about the film, he said, "Oh, Michael Pena." Oh, <laughs> but that actor I hate. <laughs> I don't like Michael. You didn't Pena. say you didn't say the character. You said he'd just be Michael Pena. <laughs> he's not Detective Vargas. Don't worry, Adam. I'm not making a slight on my my opinion on Michael Pena is not a reflection on my opinion of you. Do you believe that? That was a funny noise. What was that? <laughs> you turned into a pig. <laughs> it's me not believing you. God. You you fucking manifested then as a pig for a moment. Anyway, well, should we rank this film? Put it in our. I guess it's time to it rank it. With... All right. So we took we took a time out then, and we've ranked this. And I'm sorry to say that this is the lowest rated suggested film by one of us three. The entire time it comes at the bottom underneath a Serbian film. So it rated a seven average. So top to bottom sevens, a Serbian films in top spot. Then my son, my son, what have you done? Then Rise of Skywalker, Solo, and Green Book. So Adam has the top rated film that was suggested with Whiplash, and I have the bottom one suggested with My Son, My Son. I feel terrible what about have this. You done? That's what you said. That's what you said to yourself in the mirror when you picked the film. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very clever. Anyway, should we move on to something really more exciting? Oh, yes. Yes. Let's give a little context before we play this message. Oh, yes. Next episode, we have one of our resident film busters critics, who does reviews for us, coming onto the podcast and talking about a film of his choice. But we have no idea what it is. He sent us a little message explaining why he chose it and what the film is. Hey, guys. Scott here. I'm one of the online film critics for Film Busters. All round horror nut, all things Wes Craven, lots of gore and lots of deaths. However, I do have a less brutal side to myself, um, which is why I've chosen this film for the next podcast in which I will be their guest. I have picked a film that I know our three boys have not seen, and that is after much stalking on Letterbox, obviously. Um, and it's a film that isn't as popular as it should be to me. I saw this film in the late 90s while struggling with my own insecurities and questions about myself. So this film kind of resonates with me with what certain characters go through. The film in question is from 1996. Yes, the same year as my beloved Scream. Directed by Hetty MacDonald, who has actually just directed the final six episodes of BBC Three's Normal People, which is fantastic. And also written by Jonathan Harvey, English playwright and creator of my favourite sitcom, Gimme Gimme Gimme. The chip film I've chosen captures trials and tribulations, love and madness that holds families together. And its focus on a typical 90s South East London estate is so on point with a blossoming relationship between two young lads. And the film is full of colourful, eccentric and very relatable characters. So... The film I have chosen for our boys to see and for the next podcast is called Beautiful Thing. I hope you guys enjoy it and we'll catch up soon. Thanks. Beautiful, 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 beautiful thing. Now you've got that out of your system. Very exciting. I've never even heard of this film. I've heard of it and I, and, and I have a connection to it which I will reveal in the next episode. It was very surprising that this Ooh. is the film we're doing. I'm very excited to do it. And listen, you two are going to have to act up in the next episode because you're always taking a piss. And that was the most serious uh, analysis of a film we've ever had. And it, and it was none of us. It was Scott on his voice memo. <laughs> we, we always know that when it comes to the serious films, we're actually more juvenile than for the juvenile films. Yeah, we're going to... Yeah. we're gonna. Yeah, it's not going to go down well. It's going to go down well as far as I'm concerned because I'll be in good company for the first time in three years. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, oh, if you boy. if you behave like Neanderthals and give stupid films stupid ratings, then I then I must be excited when the guests like, are coming on. Everything you've ever given, everything you gave Jesus rolls a six. Exactly, and you gave it too. You're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, anything Ben rates is right. Paul gave Green Book a seven over this film we just did today. Madness, madness. This means you're racist. <laughs> It does. This is what it means. I'm telling you. 
I'm telling you. <laughs> Jumping at conclusions. And and also, when we're doing this film with Scott, show a little decorum, will you? We always do. You, you fucking act like our mother now, like we've got guests around. Listen, I haven't even like met this gentleman. I haven't even met him. You two know this gentleman. And I'm having to tell you to just act with some a little bit of dignity and grace. Listen, we're going to speak about no, nothing about jazzing into Kleenex. We're not going well, to speak about Adam being a little man in a film who runs around a tree. How did you get picked as that person? No, he didn't. <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> I, I wanted to choose Adam as that person, but Adam jumped in first. I'm sorry for everything. I'm oh, sorry for bully, this episode. You're a bully, you are, Paul. You're a bully. Listen, you chose the wrong film. No, I didn't. I'm glad we spoke of <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm glad we did too, and I'm glad I watched it. And um, now I never have to see it again. Why is Adam being allowed to pick all the big top films? Because he likes he likes the recognition. Mm. But, but, did you know our first top listened to episode is Whiplash? Is, is it? it? But our second one, Serbian film. How about that? Interesting. They both surprised me. I would never put those two in the top. Well, I could five. imagine why loads of people would listen to Serbian film because I can't imagine many people have done a podcast on that. But Whiplash is odd. Well, anyway, that, that was it. Next time we'll actually have a, a thing to discuss. I'm looking forward to that. And if you two embarrass me in, fr- in, front of, in front of the person that I don't even know, I will never let you forgive this. <laughs> Did you laugh and sneeze at the same time? This is what I'm talking about. You can't be doing this when people come in on the show. (laughs) Right, let me wrap this episode up. You can get in touch with us at Filmbusters Pod on Instagram and Twitter. You can go to our website, www.filmbusterspod.co.uk. We've got all our podcasts on there and some great reviews. You should check them out. Or you can get to us on our personal accounts. I am at Filmbusters Herzog. I'm at Film Busters Adam. And I'm at Film Busters See Me No Longer. <laughs> what? See Me No Longer because you've upset me, so you won't see me no longer. Oh, I'm glad you had to explain it. Well, because I'm working with amateurs like you two. In any case... Where did this come from? You're the one who picked the bad film and you were taking out on us. Because I wanted to, to have a nice discussion about it, and all you talk about is is the little people in the forest and and <laughs> everything else. Listen, Adam gave it an eight out of ten. He really liked his film. I you know, an, an he liked it, it more than Kindergarten Cop. Put it yeah, that way. That's, yeah, that's that's you deserve one bullet in the foot for that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>